Special Weather New United States and Atlantic Ocean. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You are now watching our special weather forecast. We are honored to accompany you in this broadcast as we bring you the most important updates on meteorological conditions across the United States and the Atlantic Ocean in this late August early September period. This is a time of surprising developments. While the Atlantic has temporarily quiet temporarily quieted down after tropical storm Fernand weakened, the U.S. mainland is experiencing an early taste of autumn as a powerful cold air mass sweeps down from Canada. At the same time, climate models are hinting that the Atlantic hurricane season could quickly reawaken as we step into the peak of early September. Tropical Storm Fernand, Atlantic Highlights. First, let's review the most notable activity in the Atlantic. The main player right now is Tropical Storm Fernand. After days of development and a northward track, this system has begun to weaken as it moves into the colder waters of the North Atlantic. Recent observations indicate maximum sustained winds around 70 km per hour, about 45 miles per hour. Moving rapidly toward the northeast, with this trajectory, Fernand is no longer expected to bring direct impacts to populated areas. Even coastal Canadian provinces such as Nova Scotia and Newfoundland may only see occasional gusty winds. The storm's structure is breaking apart, with many convective bands cut off by the cooler sea surface temperatures. This is a common phenomenon when a tropical cyclone moves too far north and loses its warm ocean energy source. Forecasts suggest Fernand will dissipate entirely within the next day or two. However, the Atlantic is not entirely calm. The remnants of disturbance in Vest 99L are still lingering, though the National Hurricane Center, NHC, has dropped 99L from its official watch list. The system continues to generate scattered rainfall across the Caribbean. Meteorologists often call this type of feature a persistent unstable zone, not organized enough to become a depression, yet capable of producing localized downpours and unpredictable conditions. The chance of redevelopment is very low, but it highlights the inherent complexity of tropical meteorology. Models are not always perfect and nature often delivers its own surprises. Possible low-pressure development, off the southeast U.S. coast. Another area drawing attention lies off the southeast U.S. coast. In the coming days, a stalled frontal boundary is expected to linger offshore from Georgia to the Carolinas. When such fronts linger over warm ocean waters, they can become the cradle for subtropical low formation. Historically, Several storms have developed from seemingly harmless old fronts. The European ECMWF model suggests that by Labor Day weekend, a small low-pressure system could spin up off the East Coast. In one scenario, this low would quickly move out into the Atlantic with minimal land impact. But other models hint it might track back toward the Carolinas, spreading widespread showers and thunderstorms. If it strengthens sufficiently, this could become the next named storm of the season, Gabrielle. For now, this remains only a possibility, but residents along the southeast coast from Florida to North Carolina should monitor forecasts closely during the holiday weekend. These, homegrown, systems are rarely powerful but can bring prolonged rainfall, disrupting travel plans and causing localized flooding. Hurricane season far from over, waves from West Africa. Meanwhile, in the main development region, MDR, stretching from West Africa to the Caribbean. Conditions look deceptively quiet, yet this calm is temporary. Satellite imagery shows new tropical waves emerging from Africa into the Atlantic. These waves are the raw ingredients of most major storms. ECMWF guidance suggests that some of these waves may organize into depressions once they enter warmer waters in early September. In addition, the Madden-Julian Oscillation MJO, a global-scale pattern of tropical atmospheric convection, shows signs of entering a favorable phase across the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico. This means the likelihood of tropical development is increasing significantly. After one to two weeks of relative calm, the 2025 hurricane season is expected to enter its most active phase right on schedule, early September. The quiet of late August should not lull anyone into complacency. Unusual cold air mass over the U.S. mainland, turning to the continental United States, 
The most striking story today is the unusual cold air mass surging down from Canada. Normally, late August still brings summer heat. But this week many central and eastern states have seen dramatic temperature drops. In Minnesota, some areas dipped close to freezing early this morning, forcing residents to grab jackets in what should still be summer. Across the Great Lakes and the Northeast, including Pennsylvania, New York, and Maine, morning temperatures ranged from 10 to 15 degrees Celsius, 50 to 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Even Tennessee recorded sub-20 degrees Celsius readings. A rare sight in August. This isn't just a brief cool spell. Forecast models agree that multiple waves of cold air will continue to spill southward from Canada over the next two to three weeks. Extending into early and mid-September. This pattern is tied to what meteorologists call a cross-polar flow. Cold Arctic air moving directly across Canada into the US normally. This occurs in winter. Its appearance in late August is highly unusual and signals a rare cool start to fall for much of the Midwest and East. According to the U.S. Climate Prediction Center, from August 31st to September 4th, most of the Midwest and East will remain below average. From September 8 to 14, this trend continues, meaning September will likely begin with autumn-like weather instead of lingering summer heat. Impacts on daily life this early cold outbreak brings mixed consequences. For many people who welcome crisp, cool air, it's good news, ideal for hiking, festivals, and late summer outdoor activities. But in agriculture, especially across the northern plains, sudden temperature drops may harm crops not yet harvested. The clash between cool northern air and warm, humid gulf air is also sparking severe thunderstorms along frontal boundaries. Heavy rain and localized flash floods are a growing concern in the south-central U.S., particularly in Oklahoma and Arkansas, where prolonged rainfall has already been reported. Current weather snapshot, United States, central U.S., Oklahoma, Arkansas, heavy rainfall continues, with radar showing long rain bands producing 50 to 70 millimeters, 2 to 3 inches, in 24 hours. Flooding risk remains elevated. Rocky Mountains, Colorado, New Mexico. Scattered thunderstorms may trigger flash floods or landslides in steep terrain. Pacific Northwest, Washington, Oregon. Opposite conditions. Intense heat with highs above 37 to 38 degrees Celsius, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Red flag warnings are in effect as wildfire danger escalates. Northeast, New York to New England, pleasantly cool with daytime highs around 20 to 24 degrees Celsius, 68 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and low humidity. Some mountain showers possible. Southeast, Florida, still hot and humid, with scattered late day thunderstorms from sea breeze interactions. Cooler air is expected to reach later in the week. Outlook for the coming days. Midwest and East, below normal temperatures. Multiple reinforcing cold fronts. Fall-like conditions. South, Continued frontal clashes bring thunderstorms and flooding potential across Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. West, persistent high pressure means ongoing heat in California, Nevada, and wildfire risks in Oregon and Northern California, Alaska and Canada. Cooler than average temperatures sustain the cross-polar flow feeding cold air southward. Maritime risks and Labor Day weekend concerns. Meteorologists warn that stalled fronts near the southeast coast need close monitoring. A small low spinning up during Labor Day weekend could disrupt beach plans with rough seas, gusty winds, and heavy rainfall from Georgia to the Carolinas. Further east, new African tropical waves remain the greatest long-term concern, though they may look weak now, once they hit warm Atlantic waters under a favorable MJO phase. They could quickly develop into the next major storms. This is exactly why early September is known as the heart of hurricane season. Conclusion The final days of August and the start of September bring a strikingly contrasting weather picture across the U.S. and Atlantic Basin. While Fernand fades away and leaves a brief lull in the tropics, an Arctic-born cold flow is pushing autumn into the U.S. far ahead of schedule. Yet this quiet is deceptive. New tropical waves from Africa are already en route, ready to ignite the peak of hurricane season. For Americans, 
This means preparing for two simultaneous scenarios, a rare, refreshing early fall, and the looming risks of hurricane season. Thank you for watching this special forecast. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for accurate and timely weather updates. We'll be back soon with the latest developments.